right now. Today is the day that you choose to change the rest of your life. It is time to turn your setback into the greatest comeback story ever told. And nobody is more capable than you. This is the Ranting Weight Watcher Podcast, the future number one weight loss podcast in the world. I am your host, Donato Russo. I hope you enjoy the show today. If this is your first time here and you enjoy the show, please subscribe and spread the word of the Ranting Weight Watcher podcast wherever you are and to whomever will listen. If you'd like to connect on social media or wherever else, check out my Linktree page, Linktree forward slash the Ranting Weight Watcher. Let's connect today. Hello, everyone. Welcome to episode 153 of the Ranting Weight Watcher podcast. If this is your first time here, welcome to the show. If you enjoy it, please consider subscribing. If the application you're listening to me on allows you to rate the show, please consider giving a four-star or five-star rating. It helps the algorithm so that anybody else looking for a weight loss-related podcast, will it will enable them to find me easier. And one thing you can do if you love this show to support it is share it. Anybody you know dealing with the same crap we deal with every week, week after week, day after day, tell them about the Ranting Weight Watcher. Spread the word to anyone who will listen. So I got an announcement. Next week is going to be, well, the 27th is going to be the anniversary of the podcast. And because it falls on a Sunday, it's a little weird this year. So we're going to have to probably, it'll, it's going to air on August 25th. So it'll be a couple of days early, but the actual anniversary falls on the 27th. But I'm opening the phone lines. If I, if the show has changed you in any shape or form, if, if you feel like it's helped you and you want to express your thanks or gratitude or anything you want to say, encouragement to keep on going, anything you want to say to me whatsoever, there's a phone line you can call and leave a voicemail and I'm going to play the recordings of your voicemail on the air during the anniversary episode. That number is 505. 505- 652 rant that's 505 652 7268 call that number when you get the voicemail just leave a message as you would any number and i will play the recording on the air for the anniversary episode those lines are open right now so whenever you're ready give it a call and I will have all of the voicemails ready for the anniversary episode. I have a lot of stuff to talk about today. Let's get into this! Journey updates. I am down this week. The scale was really good to me this week. Down 4.2 pounds. For the month of August, I'm down a total of 4.6 pounds. Total pounds lost since January 2019 is 169 pounds. I am officially six pounds away from the 175 pound milestone and 31 pounds away from the 200 pound milestone. I can't even think of a time period in my life where I can point to you and say this is the last time I weighed this weight. I am 226 pounds. And right now I'm thinking fifth grade was the last time I weighed this weight. Fifth grade. I mean, how many people could say they lost so much weight that they weighed what they wore weighed in fifth grade? <laughs> I don't know many, that's for sure. I don't know many. We are in phase three of my quest to lower my carb intake. This is week two that we just finished. 
I had one day where I failed and the rest of the days were a success. The week 18 average for calories was 2,202 calories per day. The goal is 2,300. The week 18 protein average was 238 grams per day. The goal is 229 grams. The week 18 carb average is 166 grams per day. The goal for phase three is 175 grams, so we are under that. The week 18 fat average is 69 grams per day, and the goal for the fat is 90 grams per day. So we have a ways to go to go upward on the fat. All in all, it was a good week. I mean, yes, I did average a little bit less calories than I'm supposed to, but I don't think that's a big deal. I mean, it is what it is. I didn't mean to do it. It just kind of happened. But all in all, I am definitely happy with this week's result. It's always great to report a loss, and especially when it's a nice loss like this one. So there's a quote that I want to talk about today. And I think it was Tony Robbins that said the quote. But I haven't been able to find it online. But I I swear that I heard Tony Robbins say it. If it's not Tony Robbins, then I'm not sure who it is. But it's definitely not me. But the quote goes like this. If you don't like your life, change it. If you don't like your job, change it. If you don't like your health, change it. If you don't like your relationship, change you first because you are going to bring yourself to the next one. Now that last sentence, if you don't like your relationship, Change you first because you're going to bring you to the next one. We're going to go in, we're going to dig into this sentence a little bit today because in his quote, if it was Tony Robbins or whoever it was, he's talking about love. But I'm going to show you on a deeper level how this can be so much more than just love. I wonder how many of us out here can say that we joined WW or any weight loss program for that matter more than once. I wonder how many times has a failed attempt at weight loss ended with us blaming the program for our failure? Am I the only one who's ever blamed the system for my failures? I wonder how many times we have found ourselves with little to no results and looking around at other people's successes on other weight loss programs and we are so enamored by their success that we're willing to jump right in to a different program and walk away from what we're doing because we think some other program might actually be better. What's the common denominator of every weight loss plan we have ever attempted? We are, right? We are the common denominator. We actually believe that the results we are unhappy with would be different if we simply take 
our bad, inconsistent habits to the next program. If you don't like your relationship, change you first because you're going to take yourself to the next one. How many of us can say we have gone to join that new program when we saw that person having so much success? We've gone over there and we joined that new program. And from day one, we're saying things like this to ourselves. Oh, I don't need to do that. It just won't work for me. Oh, I just don't have the time to be doing all that. You don't understand how busy my life is. Oh, I can't deprive myself of these things because then I will just end up binging on them and ruin everything. In other words, we actually go to the new program that we saw somebody else have so much success on. We go to that new program and we attempt to become healthy without actually changing any of the behavior that put us in the position we are in in the first place. We don't want to change a single thing even though we are unhappy with the results of this program. We're going to take all of the same bad habits, bad behaviors to the next program. We're like someone who's drowning and we're begging to be pulled out of the water but we refuse to let go of the anchor that holds us under the surface. If you don't like your relationship, change you first because you're going to take yourself to the next one. How many of us can say we have wasted countless years of our lives telling the world we are trying to live a healthy lifestyle while we carry our unhealthy lifestyle with us like luggage? We actually start a new journey We achieve some little bit, some semblance of success only to reward ourselves with the exact things that have caused us to have the problems that we have in the first place. We actually approach our healthy lifestyle as if we did the unhealthy things previously, we just did them the wrong way in our old lives. And while we're trying to get healthy again, we're determined to figure out a healthy way to keep eating unhealthy things. Because for some twisted reason, We cannot see a world that actually might exist that food might be the last thing on our minds. And food might not give us any pleasure whatsoever. The mere thought that food is actually just fuel for the body 
is so foreign to us that even the idea of anyone actually achieving a life where food doesn't matter is completely abnormal. Completely abnormal. We actually believe in a world that can actually exist that we can achieve optimal health without letting go of exactly what caused us to be unhealthy in the first place. If you don't like your relationship, change you first because you're going to take you to the next one. We're going to take a break. Don't go anywhere. I now present to you the Ranting Weight Watcher Accountability Creed. If you choose this day to say this creed, you are accountable to me, the author. You are also accountable to all of those before you who have taken the creed and all of those after you who will take the creed. But most of all, you are accountable to yourself. Now recite with me the accountability creed. Nothing can stand in my way because I choose to be unstoppable. My challenges crumble in my presence because I choose strength when I am weak. My insecurities have no power over my life because I choose confidence in the face of fear. I own every last one of my mistakes because I choose growth over mediocrity. The mirror and the scale are powerless because I move forward in spite of the result. Circumstances are not obstacles because I see solutions instead of problems. The demons of my past can no longer torment me because I choose to renew my mind daily. All things are possible as long as I believe because if God is for me, who can be against me? This is the creed I declare each day. It is about what I do, not what I say. I will learn the work that needs to be done. I will never stop, even when I've won. I will work consistently, no matter the cost. I refuse to believe that all hope is lost. I will work when I want to. I will work when I don't. I will work when they are cheering. I will work when they won't. I will work when it's easy. I will work when it's hard. The atonements that I've made are made with no regard. I will work when it's cold. I will work when it's hot because choices have consequences, justified or not. When I think I know it all, I will start back at one because regardless of what I think, the work is never done. And from this moment forward, when times are tough, I choose to believe that I am enough. And we are back. Thanks for sticking with me. Look, I need you to recognize that you're listening to the voice of a man who has done all of these things. I have been fat all my life. I have been too young to join weight loss programs but desperately needed to. I remember going, 
I must have been seven or eight years old, maybe even younger. I'm not sure. I went to a nutritional therapist. And she would talk to me about why I eat the way I eat. I lived through the times when I told myself that food was comfort. Food was happiness. And food was safety. And as I grew up, doing and believing these things, my family got to watch as my relationship with food got worse and worse. I attempted to change my life so many times. Calorie-based diets, the Mediterranean diet, slim fast, herbal life, cabbage soup diet. And Weight Watchers, too many times to even count. I switched from plan to plan to plan. I was never the problem in my relationship with all of those plans. The plan was always the problem, not me. If you don't like your relationship, change you first because you're going to take yourself to the next one. And then I got to my 20s. And obesity is not just my life. It's a way of life. It was normal for me It was familiar for me. Suddenly, I'm 460 pounds. And shit just got serious at that point. And from that moment, my answer became weight loss surgery. Gastric bypass was my miracle waiting to happen. I mutilated my God-given body in the name of a supposed weight loss miracle. In the process, I gave myself digestion issues with certain types of food because I no longer use my large intestine. I gave myself hypoglycemia and an inability to fully absorb nutrients from any food or vitamins I ingest on a daily basis because of what I did to my body. I then lost almost 200 pounds, and I thought my miracle had come. But no, it didn't. Because then I decided to waste the next 15 years of my life and gain almost all of my weight back. Then finally I get my head on straight and I discover I was back to 403 pounds in 2019. If you don't like your relationship, change you first because you're going to take yourself to the next one. On January 4th, 2019, I finally decided to change me. One week later, I stepped foot into Weight Watchers yet again. As my journey began, 
I realized that everything I struggled with as I went through the process was exactly what was preparing me to deal with the harder level that was coming for me for the next stage of my weight loss. And even though each stage got harder than the previous stage, I found that I was able to rise to the challenge. Every time I conquered a struggle, it changed me. But most of all, changed my relationship with food. Do you see yet? I have conquered all of this and I can go off right now and mind my own business and enjoy life while I watch the majority of you continue to struggle in all of your cycles. All cycles I have already broken. The passion I bring to this podcast every week will simply not allow me to watch you go through these cycles. It has become my life ambition to spread the word to anyone who will listen the truth of just how simple the solutions to your problems are. And yet, as simple as they may be, they will be the most difficult thing you've ever done. And I'm doing all of this while spreading a message that you are worth fighting for. That you're worth it. And if I see the potential in you, you should see the potential in you. But it has to start with you. Because if you don't like your relationship, you have to change you first because you're going to take yourself to the next one. The most valuable lesson I've learned in my four and a half years here is that the pleasure that comes from eating is exactly what's wrong with the whole cycle. We are surrounded in this world by food that has absolutely no nutritional value for our bodies. Putting them in our system does zero for the body. The calories that come with them are empty. It is absolutely no benefit whatsoever. The only benefit that comes from eating these foods is the pleasure that happens when they hit your tongue. The receptors in your brain that fire when these foods hit your tongue are incredibly sensitive and they are highly addictive and they only seek more. And the reasons we get caught up in these cycles over and over and over again in our lives is because we continually believe that it is actually possible to eat food that is highly addictive and only produces pleasure but produces no nutritional benefit whatsoever. We think we can find balance in life by keeping stuff like that in our life. And we reward ourselves with these foods every time we actually do well. And we don't realize that every time we reward ourselves, we are only continuing the cycle that we are obsessed with them. True balance is first realizing that the food has no nutritional value and because it's designed for you to become addicted to it that the actual addiction is only harmful to you 
and that's it. There is no balance with that food. That food you become addicted to. You eat it and eat it and eat it and eat it. And it brings only pleasure, no satisfaction. No matter how much of that food you eat, you will never be satisfied because it does nothing nutritionally for your body. It only brings pleasure to your tongue. So as long as you're obsessed with keeping these foods in your life, you'll find that because there's no nutritional value, the only thing they actually do is make you sick in the process. And then once you get sick, a doctor will be ready with some medication to treat your symptoms, not cure your sickness. And that, those, that medication will come with side effects, which will be treated with additional medication, which will have additional side effects, which will be treated with additional medication. And all along, as long as you keep seeking pleasure in food, you'll keep needing medication until the point where they're dropping you six feet under the ground. The true change you're looking for is when you stop looking for pleasure in food and start looking for it and what it will do to make you optimally healthy. We're talking about true, unconditional health and true longevity. To understand what it is to actually feel healthy when your body is running at peak conditions because you're not pleasing yourself with the food anymore you're nourishing yourself with that food when we seek true nourishment instead of true pleasure that's when we will find true health and true balance we will never find health trying to bring the unhealthy behavior with us in our new life let it go it belongs in the past for a reason you're in this position for a reason and you're worth it. So let it go. No one can do this for you. You actually have to do this for yourself. You actually have to walk away from what brings you pleasure and walk toward what gives you health. I love each and every one of you. God bless you all.